When we look at the world and the universe that we live in right now, we are experiencing on a microcosm what is happening and replicating itself throughout the macrocosm. So our evolution and our ascension is happening through organisms throughout the entire multiverses. We have a ripple effect in just the things we do alone. So us having an evolution on the mass grant on the massive grand scale will have a massive grand scale ripple effect throughout the cosmos. So what we're looking at right now is the potentiality for mineral life to bump up to plant life and for plant life to bump up to animal life and then from animal life to bump up to human life and for us humans to go wherever it is that we're going next whether it be light body or just um, something closer to what we would perceive as an astral body because while we are all different forms of life and while we are all equal in the fact that we are made from energy we are at different levels of consciousness and consciousness is evolving in a direction that everything is evolving in that direction it's not just us. But this whole path is about raising our vibrations, it's about going to a higher state of consciousness, it's about moving beyond that which is mundane and too earthly. It's about getting back to nature and speeding up our evolution or allowing our evolution to take place because there are external forces and beings that are trying to manipulate you in order to keep you here for whatever reason. We don't need to dwell upon what their reasons be. It could just be because they're parasites and they need something to feed off of. Because that's the way that the world goes. We actually do need parasites because they clean up disease and whatnot. So if, if you have parasites, you need to get rid of them. But the only way to get rid of them is by getting healthy. So there's work that needs to be put into this. And there's things right now that there's, there's different energies on the earth that are really high and really low because while we're still in this fourth dimensional experience we're still in the 3d the fourth dimension to me is being able to see within it's connecting the bridges between the dimensions and um, we're going to experience moving up in density getting higher vibrationally we had beings who would accomplish this through what they would call apotheosis which is when man becomes God. And we all know that God is just a synonym for healthy, beautiful, and strong. But the idea is to get out of this reincarnation that is happening over and over, because right now a lot of people are stuck in a sick, in a cycle. And that's why it's important that you're not trying too hard or wasting too much energy on people whose cycle is just not done yet. Because some people may not just be ready to go about the whole ascending thing and they maybe need to spend a couple more lives in that cycle in order to figure it out. So all you can do is put little hints out there. All you can do is say little things here and there to make them think. And if it's their time, it's their time. They'll find their way to some to some path somewhere. So back in the day before this mass grand scale ascension was supposed to even happen, what people would do to get to apotheosis was things like kundalini meditation and chakra work but what happened is um, a lot of these things were not allowed in in society because because the beings that ruled were ruled by parasites that did not want any evolution of man and the churches and the government were all one thing so when we're talking about doing something that goes against the church's will, you're doing something against the law. And a lot of people were prosecuted for this and actually executed and whatnot. So the, they, they had to turn to mystery schools. And during mystery schools, a lot of secrets actually got flushed out and we're just in, entering now into the information age where a lot of these secrets have to come out in order to allow us to progress to get to where we need to go now. So what an alchemist was, was somebody who, to the ordinary person, would just look like a chemist. Somebody who um, was, you know, working with different elements to do different scientific uh, research. But somebody with the eyes to look and the ears to listen could read these documents and um, read them in such a way where they're talking about gaining and getting to a higher consciousness. So an alchemist would start out with what they called calcination which is ruled by the star system of Aries. 
So it, it had to do with heating a substance until it is reduced to its ashes. We're talking about burning the ego, letting go of the material things, you know, like setting fire to self-examination. And when it comes to overindulging, you have to learn how to burn off your overindulgences, going for runs, things like that. So when you're looking at it, you need to be able to understand that the whole process is done through self-examination. It's through starting to get to know yourself. It's by taking the first steps necessary. Like I said, lighting that fire of self-examination. The next step that they would go to is called dissolution. And it's ruled by the star system of Cancer, the water symbol. So dissolving the ashes in the water was the next step that they would do. And that was the dissolution. So when you're looking at it on... Um, like a psychological scale, it's just the further breaking down of uh, structures that you had in place that wouldn't allow certain vibrations to come in. Maybe you had walls that wouldn't allow you to take in love. Maybe you had um, rejected thoughts of magic and stuff because they didn't align with what you were attempting to do at a, at a certain point in life. But that's what this whole dissolution is. It's about further breaking down those walls and allowing yourself to pull in those ideas, allowing yourself to examine those ideas and really take into consideration and just um, start, to, start to think on a grander scale. After you go through dissolution, you go through the stage of separation, which is ruled by Scorpio. It has to do with filtering and, discard, and discarding any unwanted um, substances that are still left over after the dissolution process. So when you're looking at this on the psychological scale, you're looking at the reclaiming of your life. You're looking at reclaiming the essence or the visionary aspects originally discarded by the, by the, by the logical or male rational part of the brain. And you're starting to separate the ideas of rational, logical from magical and mystery. You're starting to separate the feelings. You're starting to understand the separation between self and your ego and what you really are and truly are as a light being in your consciousness. So after separation, you go through conjunction, which is actually ruled by the planet of Venus, was a combination of earlier saved elements. So this is when you really start to bring in, after separating the ideas of magic and mysticism from logical and rational things, you start to really combine them and you start to see how the two overlap and you start to see how both worlds are actually part of the same spectrum, sort of like duality. Hot and cold are opposite sides of the same stick, anger and love are opposite sides of the same spectrum, all these different things. You start to realize that you have to walk the middle path and can join yourself in a balanced state just merging both brain hemispheres it's merging duality itself and it's just like I said starting to look at how both ends of the stick are still connected in the middle so once you get to this state you're starting to allow your heart to be more functional with your solar plexus and this is when you start to have manifestations start to take place without you having to try as hard this is when synchronicities are just coming out day after day. It's basically just when you've reached a certain state of becoming more connected with the universe around you and it's responding and showing you signs back that it cares and it, it knows because really when you look out toward the universe, the universe is looking down towards you. So when you look out towards the universe and you understand that you are the universe, then you are looking out at yourself and yourself is looking out and down at you because we live in a world of fractalization. After conjunction, we go to go through the process of fermentation, which is ruled by Capricorn. So chemically, fermentation is allowing things to soak in. It's allowing things to set and to further distinguish themselves. It's allowing life to grow on... Um, it's allowing bacteria growth. It's allowing uh, a process, a change in the chemical compound, like, like um, berries to wine or the way that they would do milk into cheese or butter and all these different things, right? But psychologically, it's it's coming right after conjunction because when you learn how to merge both brain hemispheres and you learn how to ponder things correctly, which is really just a form of meditation, um, when you really learn how to do these things and when you get to the point of balance, you allow to ferment in different ideas and you get to soak in. And then psychologically, it's really just the adaptation of higher spiritual influence, it's inspiration that is drawn 
from the ground or from the heavens or just inspiration that strikes at any given moment that is of a higher vibration. This is essentially when your kundalini is beginning to get closer to the top region of your chakras. It's allowing for higher information as long it's your whole life you're pulling you're pulling energy from the ground but once you allow to get your kundalini going and once you really begin to um, allow your toroidal flow of your magnetic electromagnetic frequency and your electromagnetic spectrum starts to vibrate at a certain rate you begin to allow um, higher thoughts of consciousness and downloads to come instead of just uploading energy from the earth all the time after fermentation you go through distillation which is ruled by Virgo and it has to do with boiling the substance so that it releases condensation. This condensation and boiling is going to boil it down to further purify what it is, right? So on a grand scale what you might actually start happening what might actually start happening when you get close to this stage is when more tests that you when right when you think that you've gone through the doors and you're about to able you're about able to withstand anything you'll come you'll have to overcome certain tests that will be really breaking down any further ego that you had because you get to a certain point where you're you're pretty sure you're over most of your ego and then that's when a lot of tests are going to come in because they need to reassure that when you're getting to this higher state of consciousness you're not bringing anything attached that's going to ruin that state of being so it's kind of like walking through some some of the final doors right and it's actually the second to last step towards your true apotheosis it's it's basically learning that even though you've activated your kundalini once you have to stay in a say and you have to stay in such a vibrational mood that it's a repetition that it keeps cycling and um, problem with a lot of people is that they pull up their kundalini and it goes wild and then they just let it die down again but it's this is this is the whole distillation process further breaking down of the ego this is the final gates and the final steps towards the apotheosis of manning of man turning to god well, after distillation you get to coagulation which is ruled by taurus and it's actually the collecting or the collection of the condensation and psychologically, this is when you've really gotten to the Philosopher's Stones type of situation. This is when all of your glands are functioning, you're a healthy being, you have pretty much reached immortal status. This is when you're reaching immortal status. This is when your glands are secreting the elixirs of life to allow you to live without even food or water. These are, this is when you begin to collect your higher self and actually just live as that without any disruptions, without forgetting about it at all. A constant reminder of who you truly are. This is when you really return to your higher state of consciousness, right? This is the return to the Garden of Eden on a planetary level. This is, like I said, when your glands will begin to secrete the elixirs of life, like your pineal gland will secrete the milk and honey of the heavens that will actually cleanse your blood and allow you to renew yourself. And it's just the last step to the apotheosis of yourself. So while all this sounds like it's very simple, you need to take this one step at a time. This is what the alchemists were calling the great work. This is what they were doing. This is what they spent their time doing. So every time you catch yourself doing something that is not of a higher consciousness, try to stop and ask yourself, is this a distraction from the overall plan? Hotel, namaste, passion.